welcome back to another video. If you're new, my name is Leah, and I am all about spending less, creating more, and sharing with you how you can do the same thing in your kitchen. So this week, I'm going to be sharing with you some staple recipes that you can put together with some simple ingredients that you probably already have on hand. Today, I'm going to be starting with my homemade dinner rolls, and I love to put butter, garlic, and Parmesan on them, but you can just serve them as is with some butter on your table with any meal that you serve. So let's get started. I am using warm milk, melted butter, yeast, brown and white sugar, but if you don't have brown, you can use just white. I like to use both for flavor, but you don't have to use brown sugar. Also bread flour or all-purpose flour. Most of the time I just use some all-purpose flour. You don't have to use bread flour and some salt. This is such an old cookbook that's been passed down in my family and we've had copies made and everything, but this just, it kills me. Bread does not automatically make you gain weight. It just kills me. So anyway, let's get started with this recipe. We need one third cup of melted butter. And if you're using a stick of butter, especially here in the US, it gives you pretty awesome um, instructions on how to get exactly a third cup of butter. But you can also weigh it. Just cut it right where it said one third goes to, and then we'll unwrap this and melt it in the microwave. And if you don't have a microwave, you can also just melt this on your stove top, no problem. I like to use the active dry yeast. You can also use fast yeast, but we need two and a quarter teaspoons or one packet if that's what you buy. So we've got our melted butter. That's pretty warm. We're gonna give that a little while to get back to a cooler temperature so it's not super hot to kill our yeast because if it's too hot, it will, kill your, it will kill your yeast. So we're also going to do one cup of warm milk. I'm just gonna use the same bowl and heat up the milk. And again, we don't need this to be super hot, just nice and warm to the touch. To our liquid warm ingredients and yeast, we're going to add our sugars. And you can do this all by hand. You don't have to do this in a stand mixer like I'm doing. You could do this in a bread machine to let it just knead for you and proof in there. But I'm going to show you how you would do this with a dough hook. Otherwise, you'll use a whisk, mix that together, let it sit for about a minute, and then you would use your hands for the rest. So we'll add all three cups of flour. I'm letting this mix for about five to eight minutes on a low speed. Definitely go for the full eight to 10 minutes if you're gonna knead it by hand. Now that we've had our dough sitting for about 30 minutes, I'm going to roll it into little balls and put it onto a parchment or greased pan. We're going to divide this probably into about 15 dinner rolls. Now I have 15 little blobs and I'm going to roll them into some nice dinner rolls. Now I'm going to cover these for about an hour until they rise up nicely. And you can cover this with a towel. I just wanted to use the saran because it's going to allow me to see them better. We got down into the mid fifties outside today, um, even though it's been really nice lately. So the inside of my house is a little chillier than normal. I did not want to turn the heat on. I'm going to keep these over on my stove and I have it preheating right now. So and there it goes, it's at 350. So we'll have this over here in a warmer environment to help it rise. I'm also going to make some ranch today. This is just a classic ranch dressing mix from Great Value, which is actually really good, supposedly. I've had many people make this and tell me that's what they used. Also the Kroger brand is good. 
Um, I have leftover buttermilk from my business that I wanna use up and then we'll have some mayonnaise. Combine one cup of each of these with this, whisk it together and let it sit in the fridge for a while. The concept of ranch dressing is so disgusting, but homemade ranch dressing is my absolute favorite. I've never been able to enjoy it homemade from myself, but I think that's because I haven't let it sit in the fridge and meld flavors for long enough. So we are going to try it again, and this time keep it in the fridge for at least 30 minutes before I try it. All right, it does not smell amazing yet, but we will see. And I'm one of the people that actually think that homemade ranch dressing smells amazing. So I'm hoping that this turns into the amazing homemade ranch dressing that we get from our favorite restaurant. All right, so this has been sitting in the fridge for about 30 minutes. It smells better already and I tasted it and it definitely tastes more like homemade ranch dressing that you would expect from a really good restaurant. So I think as it sits longer, it'll get even better. So I think if I would have used one larger jar, it would have all fit in there, but I'm actually splitting this up so I can give some to a friend with a dinner that I'm making for them tonight, and then the rest we'll have for our family. My favorite way of making chicken Parmesan is to crush up some Ritz crackers or store brand Ritz crackers and add some Parmesan, Italian seasoning, some salt, and then I take like a butterfly chicken breast and then pound it out either between saran wrap or in a Ziploc bag. So that's how I start the process. I will bread it in this, then do the egg and then back into the breadcrumbs so it's double coated. And then you can either do that in the air fryer or you can actually fry it in oil on a skillet. So I'm gonna share with you the recipe of how I did this in the air fryer as well. When I did this a couple weeks ago, it was all the same ingredients except for panko breadcrumbs. It was all that I had on hand. I ran out of crackers to make my own homemade breadcrumbs, but I still added the Parmesan cheese, salt, Italian seasoning, and I breaded the chicken with the breadcrumbs after I dipped it in egg. Now I didn't pound out the chicken as thin as I normally would. I left them a little bit thicker, still nice thin pieces, but I didn't pound them out. And then I only coated it in the breadcrumbs once instead of a double coating. But the concept was exactly the same. And I ended up doing this in the air fry basket, but I didn't turn air fry setting on. I ended up doing it at a high temperature. And then I think the key was spraying it with this canola oil or vegetable oil spray just to help get a nice crisp coating on there. So when you put this in, just make sure that you flip it about halfway through so that way both sides get nice and golden and crispy. I ended up having these at 375 for about 45 minutes. Now your cook time is going to depend on how thick of pieces that you prepare. So just make sure you slice it open and there's no pink left. But since that recipe, I did go back to the store and pick up the ingredients to make my traditional chicken Parmesan for my friends. They just had a baby and I am bringing them dinner tonight. So you can see just how thin this is. I like to keep that super thin, pound it out and it also cooks super fast that way. Especially since you're going to be basically deep frying it, you don't want it to be super thick. This way it gets nice and crispy on the outside and yet cooks all the way through on the inside and doesn't burn. You can see here, this is how I do my double coating. So you're going to do your egg, breadcrumb, egg, breadcrumb again. So I have these split into four pieces. And then I like to put about half an inch of oil in my skillet and have it heating at a medium heat. Now I test the oil to see if it's hot enough by dropping a little breadcrumb or part of the chicken in there. And if it bubbles like that, then it's hot enough. Now, whether you do this in a skillet with oil or in the air fryer, the concept is the same for some good fried chicken. You can experiment with the flavors. You can coat it with buttermilk instead of egg if you want to. And it doesn't have to have Italian seasoning and Parmesan cheese and all of that. You can do different flavors like ranch seasoning or just keep it simple with salt and pepper and paprika. And knowing that I can do this in the air fryer, I will probably include it in our meal plan more often. 
All right, now pasta is another really good staple to know how to cook, and it's pretty straightforward. But one thing to keep in mind is the importance of salt before you actually have it cooked. I like to put salt right into my boiling water and then add your pasta. It may not seem that important, but it totally changes your pasta flavor, and it's better to season it while it cooks than to wait until later. Wait until your water comes to a boil before adding your pasta to it, and then you're going to have it in there for probably about seven to eight minutes, but I'll show you how to know if your pasta is done. And when you're cooking pasta, you're gonna to wanna to stir it occasionally just to make sure that all of those noodles don't clump and stick together. Now our dinner rolls look really great, nice and risen, so we're going to take off our wrap and at 350, get these into the oven. Generally, it will take about eight minutes for your pasta, but if it is a sticky noodle, then it's going to be ready. You definitely don't wanna have the pasta overcooked, especially if you're going to stick this in the oven later, which is what I like to do when I make chicken parmesan, is to coat all of the pasta with the sauce, put your chicken on top of that, some more sauce, mozzarella, and then stick that into the oven to get nice and golden or bubbly, as melted as you want it to be, and then top it with some fresh parsley, that is optional, of course, but it always looks prettier that way, as well as extra cheese in the form of Parmesan. Now the remaining stick of butter that we had from making our rolls, I'm going to actually melt and use for our bread topping. And then once it's melted, we'll add a little bit of garlic powder, and you can use a spoon or a brush. Now this is a lot of dinner rolls for a small family or individual person, but they do freeze really well or you can split it up and give some to a friend like I'm doing here. I put some of them into a tin foil container for them and I am brushing the butter onto them. I'm also going to do the same thing with our portion as well, but this is what is going to my friend's house. I'm also making a salad to go with my friend's dinner and salting your salad is a really underrated technique. Next, I'm going to make some chicken teriyaki for my family to have for dinner tonight. And I'm going to use my Instant Pot to get the chicken cooked really quickly. So I'm going to use some boneless, skinless chicken thighs, make some homemade sauce and let it cook in that. After the chicken is cooked, we'll thicken up the sauce and serve that with some rice, vegetables, and some pot stickers from the freezer. We're gonna add one cup of water. We'll use half a cup of soy sauce. Uh, I may not actually have a full half cup of this, but we'll try. Just finishing off the bottle, it's just right at a quarter cup. I'm gonna use, we'll use a quarter cup of brown sugar and one tablespoon of honey. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic, you can also make this spicy by adding some cayenne or some garlic chili paste or some sriracha to it. That's really good. Or you can also add some ginger to it. We're going to add our chopped up chicken thighs. So I used about six or seven chicken thighs. We'll put this on for about 30 minutes. Another staple that I like to make is rice. And I like to use basmati rice, it's my favorite grain. We're going to put in two cups of water into a saucepan on high. Once that water comes to a boil, you're gonna add in one cup of rice. Turn it down to a low. And we're gonna cover this. Let that simmer for about 17 minutes until it's cooked through and fluffy. You can also add a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of butter for some extra flavor. Sometimes I'll even cook the rice in chicken broth instead of water and add Cajun seasoning and it's so good. So now that we have our chicken fully cooked, our sauce is in there, we're going to thicken the sauce with a cornstarch slurry. So that's just cornstarch and water. this on the saute function. That way um, it'll thicken it up. Now you don't have to use an instant pot for this. You could do the whole process in a large pot on your stove or even in the oven and bake it. And you can use different meat like cubed up chicken breast or steak or cubed up roast. And you can even cook ground beef or ground turkey separately and add your sauce later. It's so easy. All right, so to make the coffee cream, 
we are using half and half. This time I picked up the fat-free one. I wanna see how that goes. And we'll also use some sweetened condensed milk and then any flavor of your choice. You can do sugar-free, regular, like an actual coffee syrup, or you can do some vanilla flavoring. I'm sure that would work with other extracts and flavorings too. So you can give it a try, mix up different flavors and see how you like that. And what I would suggest is making your base cream and then just dropping in a very little amount of flavor into your actual coffee to see if you like that flavor mixed in before you make an entire bottle that way. But that's up to you. So this recipe is going to make more than one whole bottle. I'm just going to do it all at one time. Originally, we were doing one can of sweetened condensed milk, but the last two times I've done half a can to this whole bottle. Now, if you don't have empty bottles that you can do two batches like this at once, you could just store half of the half and half in your fridge and put this other half of the sweetened condensed milk into another container in your fridge. But we're gonna go ahead and split half of the cream and half of the sweet milk into two different bottles to make two batches. Now, each bottle won't be completely full, but that's important because once we start shaking this up with our flavoring, then we're going to need that space. Otherwise, it's just going to expand and we won't actually have enough room to shake everything together. And I like making this on my own too because it's been really difficult to find both a sugar-free and a fat-free coffee cream. This stuff is preservative-free, it tastes delicious, and it's both sugar-free and fat-free. I take that back. It's not sugar-free because of all of this stuff. I forgot about that. But to get the flavor is sugar-free too. So. If you look at the sugar content for the entire bottle of one of these is nine sugars. So then you divide that by however many servings, it's way less sugar. Then we'll just add in some flavor. Then you need to shake this really good until you don't see that separation anymore. And then it shouldn't need to be shaken every single time you use it, but um, just make sure that you keep an eye on that because it can separate. So before you pour it in the morning or whenever you make your coffee, just make sure that it's all combined again. Just make sure you leave room so that you don't have it filled all the way up to the top before you start shaking it because that seems to expand a little bit. I've noticed whenever I make this, you're not going to be able to shake it up all the way. It gets air bubbles and I don't know what all happens to it, but it's like it expands. So just make sure it's mixed up all the way. And then when you pour this, it really looks just like the consistency of coffee cream. It's so cool. And then also keep in mind, if you wanna write on your bottle or whatever you need to do, piece of tape, write on it so it's removable, something, so that you remember when your half and half is gonna go bad because coffee cream lasts longer than half and half does in my experience. So you have to remember before this date, you need to get rid of it. And it may even be sooner than that because once you open this, you know, some stuff, air gets to it. I don't know, something happens to milk. It doesn't always last till the due date or the expiration date. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you sniff it before you drink it. So here, after we've made it, it's been a few days, you can see it's still totally combined. You may wanna shake it like I mentioned, but it ends up working out really well and the calories, are amazing compared to a regular coffee cream, especially because we did the fat-free half and half, and the sugar-free syrup. It's just a really great option. I'm going to do the math and figure out what the price is, like the difference in price as well, but just as far as calories, amazing. And this is not super precise, but it's pretty close. We save about half the cost and we save a hundred calories by doing this homemade. So I definitely recommend it. Give it a try, try out different flavors. Let me know how you make your coffee cream, what kind of things you like to put in it. And of course, until the next video, I will see you down in those comments.